In this lesson, we're going to focus on getting the tiles in motion and respawn new tiles. The only thing changed on stage from the previous lesson is that I added a couple of objects into the background layer here. As of now, there's a limited number of objects, but to ensure the endless gameplay, these objects will also need the exact same functionality as the in-game tiles, considering out-of-bounds and respawning. I'm not going to address that now, but I'm going to press play here and I'm going to describe the algorithm we're going to build. The thinking behind this is whenever you create a left tile, we know that we're going to create a couple of middle ones. So we're going to randomize a number. And according to that number, we're going to create one middle tile for each set. So when there's enough tiles and the number is zero, we know that then it's time to create a right tile. And once the right tile is created, we can change the height since it's going to be a new beginning on a new platform. And also we're going to randomize the number of blanks we're going to create the leap with. So I'm just going to go into code and we're going to start off by looking into the script. I'm going to use Lever Creator version 2 now. That's the same as before, but I split it up to make it more obvious. So that's one's connected to the main camera at the moment. If we open it up, you can see a couple of new variables here. We got the game speed. We got out of bounds X, which will control how many tiles is in game. And if they pass this number, we know that they are needed to be out of stage. So we can address that. Also the blank counter, that one is counting up the number of blanks and also the middle counter, which counting up the number of middle tiles we're going to have. And that one is also responsible for the length of the platform. Last off, we have the last tile, and that's just keeping track of which type the last tile was. So we're going to move down into the set tile from the previous lesson. And I'm just going to add that one type here. So now we can keep track of which bricks or which tiles we already placed. So let's start off by creating some motion in this scene. We're going to create motion by moving the position of the game layer and the background layer. So Let's address the game layer here, transform.position, and we're going to create a new vector2. And that one is going to be moving according to itself, so we're just going to do the same here. We're going to go to the game layer dot transform dot position dot x, and we're going to subtract the game speed. And it's going to be according to the delta time. So I'm just going to do time dot delta time. And since it's a vector 2, we also need to address the height. But we don't want to change that. So that's going to be 0. And the background layer, it's going to be the same. So I'm just going to do background layer. And BG layer here. And we don't want the same speed since we want to create a parallax scrolling effect. So I'm going to divide that number by 4. So it will move slower. Let's go into the scene, press play, and you'll see stuff starting to move. Now we can create the out of bounds variable here. We're going to use the out of bounds x, and we need to set the value for that one. So we can use the tile position, the start tile, and just do the transform.position.x. And let's offset it by 5.0. That'll be enough to move it out of stage. Then we're going to use this value to see how many tiles that's out of bounds. So let's loop through the, the, the tiles in the game layer. I'm going to do a for each statement here. And we're going to do all the transforms, transform child in the game layer. And we're going to look if anyone is out of bounds. So if child.position.x is less than our out of bounds value, we need to address it. So 
what we want to do now is actually to do the same thing as we did here, but in reverse. So we want to bring it back to the collected tile and the appropriate category. So I'm just going to copy paste this in since it's exactly the same thing, but just reversing the function. So let's just bring in a switch here and we're going to check for ground left, middle, right, and blank. The new thing here is I added the default destroy. That's only for the startup tile. So that one we don't need anymore since we already positioned the startup. So once it auto bounds, it's going to be destroyed, but that's only for that tile. What we now need to do is just to check if there's enough tiles in play. So I'm going to check for game layer children. Game layer dot transform dot child count. And let's say if that one is lower than 25, we need to spawn a new tile. So I've already started off with a function here called spawn tile. So we're going to address that now. Before we do that, I have a helper class here, change height. And the only thing it does is it actually randomizes a number between 0 and or 1, 4. So we can get the new height possibly but it can also be the same one. I'm going to call that from the spawn tile later, so you'll see well, when I do it. So first things first in the spawn tile category or in the spawn tile class, I'm going to see if there's any blank counters or blank tiles needed or any mill tiles. So we just need to see about the blank counter if that's greater than zero. Then we know that it's still a couple of blanks left. So I'm just going to do set tile blank. And then I'm going to decrease this number. We then want to return statement since we don't want to be in this function anymore. If this occur. And same thing goes for the middle one, so I'm just going to copy paste this middle counter and decrease it and add the middle tile there. So if blank counter is zero and middle counter is zero as well, we need to address which tile was created before. So we're going to start up by checking if the first or the last tile was a blank one. So we're going to use the variable last tile here and check if it's equal to blank. Then we know that it's time to respawn a left one. So if it's blank, it's time to change the height since it's the beginning of a new platform. So I'm just going to change height or potentially change height since it's a randomizer. And then I'm going to set the left tile. And then we need to randomize how many middle tiles this going to be. So I'm going to do middle counter equals a new int and it will be a random dot range. And we're going to do it between one and eight, I think. If it's not a blank, we will check if it's on right tile. So I'm just going to do the same there. Last tile equals right. And if it's a right tile, the only thing we need to do here is to add actually the blank counter. We don't need to set any blank tiles since it's already handled up front in the function. So let's just randomize a new number here. Blank tiles. The counter will be the same thing. It will be an int random dot range and it will be between two and four. So last thing we need to check if it's 
if it can be a middle one as well. So last tile equals middle. And of course, then we know that we're going to end it by right tile. So I'm just going to do the set tile right. So that should be enough. Let's move into the scene. I'm gonna see if there's an error here. I'm gonna see, there we go. Of course, it's gotta be game layer dot transform here. So, yeah. Press play. And you'll see once a month it moves out of bounds, a new one is created. So that's enough for now. In the next lesson of this tutorial, we're going to add our hero to the game and also handle touch 